life has a way of reminding you that you know things may be going all right, but you know you're still crumbling. Can I just say to the lady who just looked at me really seriously, the more upset you are, the funnier I find it. <laughs> You turned 50 this year. Yeah, tell me about it. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I don't see it as a celebration in any way whatsoever. I cannot accept it. But it seems like your career is going better than ever. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that my body's not collapsing, Lauren. <laughs> it doesn't make me look better. Could you explain the meaning behind the title Magnificent Beast? With all of the, my show titles, they've always snuck up on me by accident. Um, I was in London at night, and I just got into the back of a cab to go home. And um, a drunk student recognised me and ran alongside the cab and then threw himself into the cab window and grabbed me by the lapels and just went, oh, you magnificent beast. And then he just let go and he disappeared. And that was that? That was that. My new show, if you're interested, is going to be called Rubbish Circus because I recently saw a rubbish circus. Oh, really? Yeah, they're quite literal. <laughs> Magnificent Beast is your first Netflix special, yeah. so reaching that wider audience, what do you hope it will bring for your career? The biggest joy in my career, the, the, the thing that I love to do most is live stand-up comedy. I love doing the TV shows and things, but the thing that excites me the most is when I get to go and perform to a crowd who've come to see me. It's, there's, there's nothing for me, there's nothing as exhilarating as that. So I think that the wider audience I get for a stand-up special, the more people the next time I write a show are likely to come and see it. And yeah, so it becomes a lovely, fulfilling uh, thing that the more people know you, the more might come and see you run around the stage shouting, which is where I uh, feel most at home. I have a system for stand-up. My system is I go home to Shropshire, where I come from, with a, a notepad and a pen, and um, I wait for my parents to say weird sh**. Then I come and I tell you. That's my system, right? <laughs> but I had some problems this time. My mum pulled me to one side when she heard I was going to do a new show, and she went, um, I don't want you to talk about me anymore. And I went, what? Your mum features a lot in your comedy as well. I know, right? Is she as disdainful of your jokes as you make her out to be? No, not at all. She is. Uh, she loves it all. She loves it all, and I and I always put these caveats in in interviews and things, just to make sure people know that I'm not as horrible as I seem to her. You know, and she's done very nicely at me, frankly. Has it made her famous in Shropshire? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, she definitely gets more attention than she would, but. Um, there's been payback, Lauren. I, I hosted the Royal Variety and I did it for her. Did she get to meet the Queen? No, she got, she got waved at by Harry and Meghan. Though. My sister gave her grandchildren and I've got her waved at by royalty, so it's all fine, right? How did it go? I haven't seen any clips from it, but beforehand you said something along the lines of, um, I'm wildly unsuitable for it and I am going to offend a great many people. Yeah, I Did think you? I, I, I don't think I offended anyone because I, I moderated my foul mouth for it. Well, it's, in England, it's quite an honour to get asked. You know, it's quite a big, big old show. I, I was looking at some terrifying statistics just before I went on stage. It's seen worldwide by something like 150 million people. So it's quite a thing to do. Um, and I think Harry and Meghan are sort of you know, nice modern face of royalty. They seem, I haven't met them, they seem amazingly normal and nice. B but a huge part of it was, you know, I knew my mum would love it. And, and, I've, and I've profiteered off that woman for years and years and years. So it's just one way of uh, playing back a little bit. But it's a challenge. It is one of those things I took, I said yes to it. And then I thought about my stand up shows and thought how much existing material could I use? And the answer was zero. Absolutely, not even like one sentence could I use in that environment. And what kind of things did you talk about? My mum. <laughs> Just different stories about my mum. And then uh, I, wrote a, I wrote a song. I wrote a silly song based on what my, uh, uh, something that my mum said about royalty. Oh yeah? So she, yeah, she just thought, honestly, she just writes all my stuff for me. It's incredible. I want to know what she said now. 
She said, um, I didn't need to panic about doing the Royal Variety because the Royals are just people at the end of the day and the, um, the Queen is just Prince Harry's nan. So I wrote a song exploring that idea that the Queen is just a nan. So you got to meet Harry and Meghan. What did you say to them? So I can't remember, but, but they're just surprisingly normal. Do you have to bow to Royals no. of that level? No, there was none of, all, none of that. I mean, people were bowing all over the place, but I don't think they expected it. I think some people just have a knee-jerk bow reaction when... But I know they, were just, they just shook your hand and then... In fact, Prince Harry punched me in the, in, the, in the side as he walked past me. I presume playfully. Your mum sounds like someone who can really take a joke. Yeah, good job, right? When you were growing up, what made you laugh? My family, and that's, uh, that's why I think they feature so heavily in my stand-up, is my family made me laugh. My, my mum's very funny, um, but my dad was preposterous, was a ridiculous character. Mum was very much sort of took the burden of, of being the voice of reason and, uh, uh, and the disciplinarian a lot of the time, because someone had to, whereas my dad was just a ludicrous clown. Yeah, so the influence that they all had, my sister included, is a very funny woman. The influence that all of them had, it, there's no doubt that it informs everything I do. My mum said to one of her friends while I was there having a, having a coffee, uh, said, I don't know what he's going to do when I die. And uh, her friend said, well, it's not going to change things at all because Bob's been dead for four years and he's still <laughs> the centre of the show, and it's true, you know. And I'm delighted that my, you know, my dad passed away four years ago and he's still the centre of this most recent show. I think it's great. We all love it as a family. He's still there because I've got such a backlog of stories and things. On the day my dad died, when me and my mum and my sister were standing around his bed on what I've always described as the worst day in my life so far, and if a male nurse, he came into the room and he said, Ho! I am having a bad week. And we all went, yep, it's pretty bad over here as well. So did it feel like a, a bit like a competition when you were growing up? Uh, who could land the best joke? There was no competition in between me and my dad. My dad was and will remain far funnier than me. Yeah, just hilarious, man. So when you're touring, do you like having that anonymity again? I do like the an anonymity, but not for too long. Is the, is the honest answer to that question. Because if you've spent a long time, you know, devoting your life to getting people to recognise you, <laughs> then it's nice to have a break from it. Yeah. So I've got a, I, I've bought a, a tiny house in Spain and I, uh, I go there and no one knows me in this weird little village. And it's nice for about six weeks and after a while I think, okay, I'm ready for some more attention. It's not where you, not the one where you threw cheese balls at the it dog, was it? It is the one it? where I threw cheese <laughs> balls at the dog, yeah. Oh, no. I thought, yeah. You, I thought you might have been banned no. by the no. Spanish. No, I'm largely ignored by the Spanish, but I quite like that. I quite like to be ignored. They're not even, it, not even on a height level. Like a lot of places you go, people will look at me because I'm tall, but in Spain, I'm bizarrely invisible. It's nice. Apart from making people laugh, what other skills do you have that you're proud of? Just, I do a lot of gym work though, a lot of hard gym work. It's just all about the body for me. Well, if I'm not on stage, I'm just all about just making myself as tight and fierce physically as I can be.